you. Oh, can, can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's great. So I'm, I'm going to talk about something called XDP Express Data Path. It's uh, a new, fast, and programmable network layer in the network stack. This is sort of a bit introduction to, to what this is about because I'm not sure everybody knows what, what this is. Some, some of you might already know. So, so I want you to actually get something out of this. So what, what will you learn? You will actually learn that Linux got a new and uh, fast programmable network layer. And I'll try to teach you a little bit about the building blocks, but this is not like a tutorial talk how to use it actually. It's more to get an overview of what, what we've done and what the competition is. And also how this actually got motivated. This is all upstream in the upstream kernels. Uh, but I want to talk about how, how the deep I convinced people to, to do a whole new layer in the network stack. And so I also want to talk about eBPF because this is a very essential thing in, the, in, in, in XDP, how we use that. And I'll try to demystify why this technology is so fast. And, and I'll also try to explain the hidden bugging because there's actually people that don't get it uh, when, when, when they're working with this, how, how we do this bugging and why, why we sort of hit, try to hide it for the driver's perspective. And then we have something called the XDP redirect, which is a novel approach. I'll teach you about that. So I also have a sort of an anti slide, but you will not learn. Like you will not learn about the, the superpowers of programming this. Uh, you have to, to look up some of my other talks. Uh, so I, I, really, I really want to make this eBPF more easy consumable, but not in this talk. I actually have a link to a YouTube talk where I'm, I'm the only thing is a tutorial of how to actually use this stuff. So there's also this, we just try to compress everything about what is XDP into one slide. Uh, I'll cover some of the details uh, later, but it's, it is basically a new layer in the network stack before we allocate the SKB. And we are working directly on the, the DMA level. So just after we get the DMA sync to the CPU, we will allow you to run a small uh, BPF program. That, and this is the thing that makes it a runtime uh, programmable. It means that we are sort of competing at the same level as some of the kernel bypass solutions out there. And I'll explain more why it's so fast, but it's mostly because we're taking the decision so early in the, in, in, all the way down in the driver. And we're also avoiding uh, any memory allocations. It's also important for me to stress this is not kernel bypass because the, like the competing solutions, that's, that is kernel bypass. What we are doing is we're actually keeping the data plane inside the kernel and using BPF to allow users to determine what to do with these packets. And we also try to, to see this as a, as a cooperation with the kernel where XDP can do something, but as soon as you, XDP chooses not, selects that they cannot do anything, we'll, we'll fall back and let the normal kernel stack handle this. So it's, it's definitely like cooperation with the kernel, which is very far from the kernel bypass solutions. So what? How the beep did I get this in the kernel, right? So how do we motivate a whole new layer in the network stack? Form the network stack. Uh, so the motivation is through competition. So I want to say thank you to DBDK because that made me actually work on the project, right? Uh, so the kernel bypass solutions like DBDK and NetMap and P, uh, PF Ring, they can they, they show these uh, great benchmarks that they are ten times faster than the kernel network stack. That is actually true for that specific use case, and it leads to these wrong conclusions that where people say the kernel is inherently too slow to handle networking. And that's, that's, that's sort of pissed me off. So that's why I started working on this. Uh, I must acknowledge that the, the other solutions have, have been ahead of XDP. We started this in 2016. That's the initial idea. And NetMap, I found some uh, notes about that it was 2011. And I found some early reference to PF Ring. I'm not sure it was publicly released at that point, but it was. 2010, they had something. And DBDK, I think it was around 2013, it was also released 
as open source. Even after DBDK was released, Google had uh, had, has, has released an article about how they do the same kind of kernel bypass, dating, backdating the article and saying they did this in 2008. So I guess they were before the others, but but there's a different that there's different solutions. But this this really unfair comparison comparison of comparing apples and bananas because the kernel bypass, it operates in, uh, at layer, layer two and layer three. That's the use case. And the, the network stack is built on the assumption that we, we have to deliver this into sockets. And it's, even though if we use Linux kernel to look, do forwarding, it still takes the, the hit up front that, that we wanted to do socket delivery. It's even in, inherited in, in the name of our metadata container for that we have associated with the packet, which we call SKB, but the data structure is called SK underscore buff, which originates from socket buffer. So that's the whole thing is built around. So XDP avoids this socket buffer and has a layer before that. So, so the design goal is to operate at the, at the same, same, same level. So L, L2, L3 uh, in, in network stack, and so, we have this layer I've mentioned several times before the LSKB, and we have to hook in the driver. So the design goals is to close the performance gap. This is actually not the design goal to be faster. We just want to close the performance gap. And we also want to provide an uh, internal alternative, which is more flexible. And that is actually, uh, for me, very important that, that we don't, like the bypass solution, steal the whole, whole net card. We actually, with BPF, we have a filter solution where we can choose what, what kind of traffic is it that, that we can handle in this earlier stage for this specific use case of a, a fast path and not take the whole NIC. The other bypass solutions usually have the issue of they steal the whole NIC, they pull it into user space, and then they figure out, oh, some of the packets I would like to actually give them goes to the kernel. So they'll have to re-inject the packet in the, in the network stack. In our situation, we are a layer above the network stack, and we will just let the, the, the packet continue down to the normal network stack. And this way, it's much easier to cooperate with the network stack. Uh, yeah, and it's also important that we work in concert with the existing network stack. Tom Herbert likes to say that. So, show me some benchmarks. All right. So, this is actually. A, a drop benchmark, and I've, I've put in here, this is not working. Uh, so you can see the lower line is usually how the, the pink line down here, that is uh, Linux how it's usually loaded. We here you have contract, which actually has a significant overhead. And you can see that the other solutions up, the DBDK one, the XDP one, is, have a significant uh, significantly faster. If you actually drop the packets in the IP tables raw chain, you can actually see that, that Linux also scales up to about 25 million packets per second here, but with more CPUs added to it. And I also want to point out this, this scale out here is not a mistake. This is million packets per second. So we are handling 100 million packets per second. These, these numbers are abs abs absurdly crazy if, if you think about it. So this is a 100 gigabit NIC. Uh, I also want to point out that the Linux actually scales really, really nicely here. Uh, but the important thing is for XDP is that we are, we are, following, the XDP, uh, to, 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 uh, we are following the DPDK line. Uh, so we can see, uh, actually the, the performance difference here is not that big and we are going to work on that actually. Uh, in the next, uh, the next performance test actually shows when we do layer two forwarding, uh, we have two different ways in XDP to do forwarding. And now, the, now DBDK is actually in the middle of our performance scale here. Um, <coughs> we use something, I'll mention this XDP TX, where we just bounce the packet out down in the driver. <coughs> Figure out we want to transmit out the same NIC, we can just uh, switch the packet around and send it out again. If you do that, we can like, we are actually significantly faster than DBDK. Uh, if you use the redirect feature, we, we, are, we are scaling nicely up and following uh, 
the DBK line. Uh, so, we, we, in some certain situations, we can actually be faster than DBDK, but that was really not our goal. The, our goal is to, to sort of close this gap, as you could see in the, in, in the, in the previous slide, that we are, we are not flatlining, or on this, this is like not flatlining just because the scale is so crazy, that, that we, have, we are actually following DBDK. So, I'm, I'm saying this is a success, and we still have more that we can optimize. So, yeah. So yeah, this sounds really cool. So you definitely want to know more, right? The, the, the design and building blocks you, I'll give give to you. So, <coughs> so this is this is the basic building blocks again. So you get this small BPF program you can load, and the BPF program <coughs> can return an action or a verdict. You can have you want to drop the packet, you want to pass it, you want to transmit it out directly, like bounce the packet out. That was extremely fast. And we have another kind of drop, which is called aborted, because which you can use to debug your applications, because we have add, uh, if you call XDP aborted, we have a trace point you can activate to debug your application. And we have the XDP redirect, which I'll talk more about. <coughs> and to cooperate with the network stack, we, we, you can actually push and pop headers if you want to implement, if the current network stack doesn't support a specific uh, Encapsulation, encapsulation type, you'll just you decapsulate it with XDP and send it, like maybe put on a VLAN instead, and then the network stack knows where to put it or put something else on. Uh, and, and you can also propagate some, some metadata from the XDP stage down to the network stack when the SKB does a special, you'll need to another BPF hook where you can actually take this metadata you're setting which will be placed just in front of the, the packet payload. You write some information in there, you did in the XDP step, and you can use that information in the SKP and maybe transfer the hook into the XDP mark, mark if, if you want to do that. I have some examples in the kernel uh, samples BPF uh, tree. So the, 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 the design, if you look at it as a data plane and control plane, then we keep the packets inside the kernel we split, it's sort of inside the kernel, the data plane is sort of split into the, the core kernel where we are in charge of moving the packets really quickly. I see that as, as my responsibility. And, and in, we have the BPF program, which does the, the logic, you have the action and you can have access to the packet. And this, the control plane is, is user space because you allows you to load this BPF program and you can control control the programs, what it's doing by, by having these BPF maps. And everything goes through the, the BPF syscall for, 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 for changing and modifying this. So I see, I see this as the data plane and control plane uh, split. And so why should kernel developers really love the, the BPF, uh, this split that the user space does all the pro programmable uh, stuff? It's actually because uh, uh, that 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 the, the, the API is, is tied into the user space app, and I don't need to to, to fix the, the a, a kernel API every time I have to to do something. Um, so it is BPF is a sandbox running inside the kernel um, for the XDP hook. It can only be loaded by root, uh, but you you give the user access to some some actions, and what you also do if you have to interact with the kernel state. We have we have to we have to do some work on the kernel side, right? Where we are adding helpers that allow you to to look up or change the kernel state. That all all happens through BPF helpers. So when people come up with new stuff there, we do have a responsibility in the kernel to, to add these helpers, uh, which is kind of the the will be will become part of the kernel API. But when once users have their their program and they want to do something specific, they want to change the behavior of the program, they are actually just controlling this through to BPF maps. And that is not, it's not affecting the kernel. We are, we are not affecting us to, to add a new kernel API for, for that. Uh, so that's, that's really great for also for, for users so they, they can get quicker going and, and implement something I didn't think about and I don't have to do any APIs around that. So that's a lot of freedom for, 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 for the users.
så det kan invente nyt stof. So what's what time do we have? Okay, I'm just speaking pretty quickly. Uh, so why is this XDP redirect so so interesting? Um, it's fairly new. It got into 414, uh, and drivers are fairly uh, slow to adapt. Um, but uh, if you in the, in the basic form, you are, we are allowed to redirect these raw frames out of another net device. Uh, and the, the device drivers have to implement a network device operation, NDO. And I just want to point out that we have introduced something where we can redirect into maps, and it is significantly faster. Uh, if you use the, the normal helper called BPF redirect, you'll get 7.5 million packets per second. But if you use the, the map redirect, you get 13 million packets per second. So that's, that's kind of strange. Where, why do we get so large performance upgrade from that? Uh, so let's, let's look at what's, what's novel about the, the thing about redirecting into maps, because a lot of people a lot didn't really get that. And I had to use a lot of time convincing Bjorn that they, <laughs> we had to do it this way. <laughs> uh, so the first thing is that redirect is, is a much more generic name than forwarding, right? So, and what, that is because I want to do other things than just forwarding out uh, an, an, another net device. Uh, I'll talk about what, what kind of stuff we've implemented uh, later. But the first trick we actually do is we do, we are hiding uh, receive bulking from, from the driver via this map code. Uh, the driver still processes one, one packet at a time, and they called XDP do redirect. And th that is because we have a lot of existing drivers, and we, we wanted it to be easier for to adapting the drivers. Uh, we didn't want the drivers to have to coil up a lot of um, uh, packets before calling it this in as a full bulk. So that was to help drivers easier to adapt this. So this, for every packet, they call it the do redirect, but at the end of the driver snappy pull loop, we sort of flush the packets to a do flush map call. Uh, and that, that, is, that is why we are seeing the big performance effect. And the, the, the big expensive things with, when, with, with net cards, at least with the physical net cards, is that there's, you have to write a tail pointer or a, a doorbell to inform the, the hardware there's, there's packets to be transmitted. That's a very expensive operation, so if we can bulk that, that's where we get the most of our performance boost from. Um, the second trick is that when we, when we are redirecting into maps, we, uh, we are not saying anything about uh, that, that this has to go out of device. This is, this is the map type that defines what, what, what kind of effect this has. That means we can, we can hopefully avoid changing the, the more driver code again. It is fairly painful to, to go change all the drivers to, to support stuff like this. I have, I've been there uh, and it's, it's pretty annoying. So we want to invent something that, <coughs> that didn't require us to change the driver every time we figure out a new type of redirect. So this is the, the basic code that I sort of a, a little bit explained. Uh, what's, what a driver would need, need to do to support XDP. So while we still have descriptors in the receivering and we have budget left, we, we, we call for each packet, we call the or DMA buffer, uh, we call a BPF program run, uh, which is what is invoking our BPF program and returning our action. Inside the BPF program, you call a helper called BPF redirect map uh, and an, an index into to this map you want to redirect into. This way, I, I don't have anything to say anything about what map type here. That is something that the program chooses, and we hide that in the generic code. The pass we break, of course, and the TX, we, we have a driver local function that, that can transmit stuff out. But in the redirect, we call the redirect action. And then we have, have the other one. I talked about the XDP board. We have the trace exception. And, and XP drop, 
I, I put in here the result is a driver XDP consume because you can do, when you choose to drop the packet, it's usually uh, driver specific how you want to recycle this. We can uh, recycle really quickly. You basically just have to move a pointer over to, to be able to reuse this, this frame again if it's a, it's a drop packet. So that's driver specific. And at the end of the happy loop, we have the do flush map. And, and, and this, this is what, where we are hiding, uh, hiding that, that, that we're actually doing a bulk. So what, what kind of uh, redirect map types have, have we invented? And we can invent more. So the, the first one, the basic one, is the device map which contains net devices, and you can sort of figure out that you want, that is what you're transmitting out another device. You're using it to use for that. Uh, there's one called CPU map, uh, which I implemented, that allows redirecting these raw frames to a remote CPU. It is actually kind of a huge uh, trick, uh, uh, or fairly controversial because what I'm doing, I'm receiving on one CPU and I'm, I'm, not, I'm choosing what CPU I want to start the network stack on. So I'm redirecting the raw frame and on the remote CPU, I'm starting the network stack on, on this CPU. So I, I can control that. Um, so that, that is a fairly powerful feature where you want to, so you can control where this network stack and if, if you want to have high priority Packets you want to process on, on one CPU that is, you know, is not overloaded or lower priority packets you can put somewhere else. Um, then we have the AF XDP XSK map. I guess uh, Bjorn made up that name. <laughs> he's, he's here in the audience, uh, which allows you to actually do move these raw packets into user space. And we chose to introduce a new. Uh, address family called XDP, which is, so we have a new socket. And I think it's very close to the, the net map design because we are, we are now keeping drivers inside the kernel and we have a communication channel with these frames with, with user space, which is have a single producer, single consumer concept, so we don't have any locking. Do you have a question? So could you, you use uh, AFXDP as a replacement for TAP too? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure how TAP is, is implemented, but I, the guys who implemented it just here. So using AFXP instead of TAP? Well, <laughs> sort of, yes. <laughs> uh, or depends. You mean passing? Yeah. So, what's the use case for you? Like visualization. Pass. visualization? Yes. And we're actually actually looking into that to see if you can use FXDP as a way of like think of, or replacing uh, Vertai, for example. Yeah. So I was thinking maybe instead of having the host in the kernel, you can have XDP, and then uh, in user space the Vertio implementation would be as fast as vhost if it uses XDP. Because the advantage of vhost is that you can do zero copy and all that. But if you can do the same with XDP and use a space ring buffers, then maybe you could use F XDP to move uh, vhost back into, Vertio back into user space without losing the performance. Right. Yeah, <laughs> correct. Yeah. It's a, it's a, it sounds like we, we will have a really good discussion afterwards to figure out how, how we do this in, in practice. That was sort of my hope that people would show up here. Yeah, so, so these are the maps we have. I guess we can also invent new map types uh, when we come up with new crazy ideas. But the important thing is we don't have to modify the drivers anymore. And that's, that's one of the big benefits. And then, then Spectre version 2 killed my XDP performance. Oh no. <laughs> I got kind of frustrated. I have to go back and, and fix that and coordinate with uh, Christopher Helwig. Uh, so all of a sudden when I upgraded my, my new, my, my, the compiler on my system, all of my performance went away because all of a sudden the compiler was putting in the, 
is uh, trampolines or red, red, red pollines uh, uh, for, for indirect cause. So all of a sudden, before I was doing my test, this for the, I was ha having 13 million packets per second. Uh, on a, this is per core uh, numbers. Uh, and then all of a sudden, when I rebooted my kernel after I, after I upgraded to my Fedora kernel or the, the GCC version, oh, my performance was almost half. Like, what, what's going on? Six million packages per second. So I initially thought that we have the NDO XMIT call. So I implemented the, the more bulking in this area, but it only helped a little bit. The real pitfall is, is, is the DMA API. That to, to, to be generic, it has a, a lot of indirect function call pointers, even though on Intel, it's, it's actually sort of empty. Uh, some of the calls, are, the, the sync call is actually not doing anything because uh, if, if, you, if, if, if the memory is, 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 is not uh, any uh, DMA, uh, if it's the basic DMA API, that, then, then there's a, a sort of empty function call, but we get all the overhead of, of calling through these indirect function call pointers. And Christoph Hilvey, he, he, he did a proof of concept patch and, and we would get the performance back to like 10 million packets per second and there was definitely more options for, 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 for tuning this. But this is definitely something I have to fix. Uh, I guess especially given I have my red hat on, I cannot just uh, disable it. I, in my test kernels, I can just disable this config option, the config red put in and <laughs> do my testing. But for customers, they, they have to have this on, right? So this is something I'm going to work on, on, on fixing. So any comments on this? I remember when I worked on NDIV a few years ago, um, I was working on an IRM board and I figured that I could almost double the performance by doing some small modifications to the DMI API because I don't remember the exact details, but in practice, I think we were uh, unmapping uh, the, um, each packet in turn, while in practice, you know that they are delivered in order. So uh, I used some batches to um, unmap everything at once or to flush everything at once, and I could double the performance. It was not useful on uh, x86 because uh, it was very cheap and it was uh, yeah. almost not noticeable. But on this platform, it was very important. And maybe stuff like this can be reused to address uh, these shortcomings. I don't know. Yes, definitely. So that's also what, why I haven't optimized it yet because on Intel platforms, it, it <coughs> doesn't matter that much, the DMA calls. It matters all of a sudden when we get the Spectre calls in. But on other platforms which I haven't tested, then I, I just last week I got a, a ARM board with, with two, two times 10 gig uh, ports on, so I'm going to test it on, on that to figure out. Oh, just. So it's particularly pointless having indirect function call pointers, as you say, on the Intel platforms. We ought to be able to patch those up at runtime, or at least have, if it is the Intel one, then call it directly, else call the, indel, the indirect function call. There are plenty of ways we can. Yeah, yeah, we have Get to figure out a way that is acceptable for upstream to work around the spectral call. Yeah, but it, it shouldn't be that hard for that one because it is always going to be the same one at boot time. Yeah, yeah. so that's the, the proof of concept patch from Christoph which was just, just checking if, if, if this is the, the, the case of, of the most common one and just calling that directly because that, that makes the compiler see that, oh, this is not a, a random indirect call, so that, that way will actually allow you to, to, to do the call. We do exactly this in HA proxy in the scheduler because uh, uh, there is a single function which is called uh, maybe 99.9% .9 of the time and uh, it still significantly improves performance and probably you can benefit from this as well. Yeah. So I was also thinking about doing, because the DMA stuff, they actually have, I can bulk, bulk DMA mapping, so I can, I think it's called a scatter gather DMA mapping, so I could sort of abuse that a little bit and. And, and, and call, so we actually already have, we could do bulk calls down to mapping and unmapping uh, because we, I already have, because I, I implemented the, the redirect bulking, I already have a bulk of packets that I could call in one DMA mapping call with the scatter gather uh, call to map all of them and unmap them, then I would only see the cost of the, the overhead uh, once. 
But I have to have to look into the details of that because the structure is a little bit bigger and I'm very careful about uh, DMA cache lines. And it sounds like we will have to work out different options of figuring out which one is the best. And then, <laughs> answers to, to you, you can just keep the mic. Because <laughs> so there were some questions uh, at, at uh, the NetConf uh, uh, conference where, where there was a speaker talking about NDIV, which you already mentioned, that is sort of, you did something similar to XDP just before XDP, but I was faster upstreaming <laughs> my stuff, so. Definitely, we presented it uh, uh, four years ago, but uh, we never went f uh, much further than this, except using it. Yeah, so your talk is actually also talking about migrating from NDIF to XDP, so I have some, some, some things. So one of the things to say is that you, you want a uh, RX done call, right? Which, but we already have that, that is the, the map flushing, so we are just, just hidden it behind it, this map abstraction. Uh, so if, like in theory, you could do something really ugly, you can implement, <laughs> implement this uh, as, a, as, a, as a map new map type, as I explained. Uh, I'm not sure how well this will be received upstream, uh, but we, we, we could try. Uh, so you could basically have, you have to filter and match and part of the, your program, you could spit that out into a BPF program, and then you choose the action redirect into your, your module, which is, will be a map. And in this map, this is the map type implementation is just regular kernel code, and you can do whatever you want there uh, to, to take it, the action from that. Uh, and because one of the issues NDIF has is they want, it wants to have some out packets, and I think we already discussed that. Maybe you don't need several packets. The, the, with XDP, the difference between NDIF and XDP there is that XDP will not do any memory allocation, so you are allowed to override the, the incoming packet and use that as the, as the outgoing packet, but with NDIF, you actually have a, a, a separate outgoing packet, which many of your programs will then, it's easier for them to like <coughs> construct the outgoing packet from the incoming packet, while in XDP, you would actually have to have to store this information somewhere to override the, the the one you just received. So, in my opinion, it's not a big deal. Uh, that's uh, just a matter of, of um, optimization, but uh, it can be worked around one way or another. Yeah. Uh, it's not a big deal. It's much difficult to try to adapt uh, mm -hmm. to, to, to ensure mm -hmm. that uh, XDP will be able to um, to offer all the services we need. But this one is very specific. Uh, it's just a matter of performance difference and we can probably address it differently. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and so you can actually, inside the map, you can call your Rx handler, directly how you want to. Uh, and you, you would have to, you will receive the done through the, the map flush operation. Uh, so you could actually hide your existing code and basically put it in there. Uh, and, and then, then there was also a question about you want, want a, a handle TX. So uh, when, when the, the packet is transmitted, it's, it's NDF also want, want to see that. And, and, and you explained to me that is because you want, want to keep the state going. Uh, uh, so for XDP, we are not adding a directly TX hook because it doesn't make so much sense because we already have one. It is just because there's already a SKB, and that's what you have in your own call. And we have a, a BPF hook at, at the, the traffic control uh, in the both ingress and egress, but you could use the egress hook to, 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 to catch this. And BPF programs, the way they work, they can also access maps, and that's the fast path in itself. Then they, they can communicate things to each other through, through maps um, to, to keep the state uh, updated. Uh, I also have a, there's only one place I, I, I could see that we could have another BPF hook for, for, for the transmit part, that is if you're redirecting out another net device and you figure out that, that the transmit queue is full. Right now we have 
uh, a trace point. You can hook into a trace point with XDP to figure out that you're actually trying to send, if you have a 100 gigabit and a 10 gigabit link, and you're, you're overloading the, the 10 gigabit link, then you're just dropping packets massively. Uh, we have a, a, a trace point to handle that today, but trace points are a little bit slow. There's like 45 nanoseconds. Uh, I consider that slow. Uh, <laughs> But, and then, then we have to do something, it would be smarter. At that point, the packet is already dropped, it would be smarter to actually to have a hook and in, in the transmit point to have another BPF program running there and saying, okay, uh, I tried to, to transmit it out, but I got back, I had to drop the packet. So what I could do instead, I could like choose to send this packet somewhere else. I, I could make it smaller, the packet, and send it back to the, 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 the sender as information on this packet was dropped, I can do all the, all the kind of different things. I could choose if I have another net, net link, say, oh, now I'm overflowing this one, I'm going to transmit on the on another 10 gig link uh, to, to take a load balancing decision already there. So that's a very interesting uh, idea I'm, I'm working with that, that, that we could, we could uh, extend XDP with. Uh, and this is, sort of my end slide, but I, I demand to, this to be my end slide because this is not only me who has, uh, who has uh, done, done work on this, there's a lot of people who uh, worked uh, uh, for the last two years on, on, on upstreaming different, different kind of components. So, questions? Um, not exactly a question, just a comment. You were um, comparing uh, XDP to um, DPDK, NetMap, or PFRing. Yeah. And in my opinion, uh, its biggest advantage uh, compared to them is that all of these uh, other mechanisms uh, use, uh, work only in user space, and they are exclusively designed to be on, uh, on the, to build a data plane which does not interact with the network stack. And, uh, the benefit of XDP uh, is exactly the opposite. It's that um, being in the kernel, it can interact with the network stack with almost no overhead. And that's a big benefit because the network stack is extremely rich and reliable right now. And all of these uh, mechanisms have to reinvent everything from scratch. You see some uh, user land TCP stacks and whatever because there is no other option for them to have performance. We used to try NetMap in the past, five years ago, and the, the performance was absolutely terrible when you want to bounce your packets from user land to the kernel again yeah, uh, to after that. analyzing them. Yes. In fact, it's very easy to drop. What is very difficult with them is to accept. Yeah. And uh, that's not the case most of us are interested in, in fact. Yeah, I just want to mention that recently we added, uh, from BPF, we added a, a helper, a BPF helper, that allows you to do the, the FIP lookup, the route lookup, directly from XDP. So we actually have an example where we actually can, can do route, full route lookups. And the, the interesting thing is that if we do a route lookup and if we don't have the next top MAC address, like it, it will just fall back to the normal kernel and we, it will actually do the up lookup. And then the next packet, we, we, like, we, can, we will forward that fast on the fast path of XDP. So there's a question behind you. Hey there. Uh, so two questions. One about the benchmarks. Yes. So you use the IXGBE. Uh, no, no, not, 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 not for the benchmark. The benchmark was a Mellanox 100 gig NIC, the newest one you can find. And the, the MLX, MLX5. EX, that's, okay. that's the only one that could, could, I've never seen this high performance numbers like that. In okay, so okay, did you provide also the, um, the setup, the coalescing, all the optimization that may have been done, the CCTLs, waving, stuff like that, or just to compare? If, if I do tuning of, of Yeah, did you, did you find tuning before comparing the, the two? I, I, I didn't do much tuning on, 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 on this for the, for, the, for the test actually. Okay. Uh, and on the IXGBE, it's also a direct cache access where the NIC pushes. It's very important that we have the DDIO, the direct cache access. Uh, that, that is significant. Uh, that was at the numbers there. I actually did some tuning to, to, the, to the NIC. That's, so I remember now that I actually had to turn down the, 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 the ring buffer, the size of the ring buffer to get these numbers, not to t turn it up. 
or turn it down to make it smaller because that, that leaves a smaller cache footprint. And, and that, that way, the, the DDIO was, was still kicking in. The CPU, I, I cannot see when it does it. I, I, can, I can measure it with, with, with perf that to see it when cache misses are going on or not. But in these benchmarks, I don't have a single cache miss. Uh, it all gets loaded into layer three, but if, if when you scale up to more CPUs, and when you scale up to more CPUs, you are adding a receive queue, uh, the ring buffer, uh, using more and more memory, and at some point, the CPU chooses not to do direct cache memory, and, and then we see a, a big uh, fall in, and so we actually did some, some tuning to, <coughs> to, to account for this. The, 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 the performance numbers are going to appear, appear in, a, in, a, in, a, in a scientific article that we, we recently got accepted uh, in the scientific paper, so that's mm -hmm. right. Any more questions? Well, I, I also have extra slides if you have more time. <laughs> what's, what's, what, what time is it? Five minutes? Okay. That's extra time. <laughs> <laughs> So there's, there's the CPU map redirect, but that's actually, I think, I think we already talked about, but that we, what's that? 10 minutes, okay. Uh, so I, I find this very interesting because I implemented it. Uh, <laughs> but we actually already put the feature in, in, into Suricata, uh, and they're using it. So they had this issue that sometimes the, the, the NIC hardware the, the, the receive uh, the RSS hashing is, is broken and, and the, 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 the distribution on the CPUs are uneven. So, uh, for example, actually also the, the, the standard Intel 10 gig NIC, if you do double tech VLANs, if it, the NIC doesn't know about this because to do RSS hashing, it has to figure out know all the protocols. Uh, so what happens is that everything ends up on, on CPU Q0 or, or NIC Q0, which is only bound to one CPU. So we use this to, to distribute, use XDP to, to handle that the hardware have this issue and then we can redistribute the packets on, 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 on the CPUs. We've been using that for some customers. And the other thing is that if, if you have to, the interesting thing about the CPU web redirect is that you can have one or dedicate a couple of CPUs to do your den denial of service protection and then, but you actually don't want to start the normal network stack and on the user space program and all things. User space programs are easy to move on to another CPU, but the, the network kernel stack runs on the same CPU that the, the packet was received. And that has, like, it will take some time. So the idea is that we will just push, and start the network stack on another CPU, so we don't take up the resources of the denial of service protection program that is running on, on this, this CPU. This makes, also makes the XDP code, the whole, the whole code for the XDP and the kernel code and the BPF program itself, quite small, so we'll, we'll be hot in the CPU cache. Instead of having to call, um, for example, the network stack, which will flush our CPU instruction caches and other CPU data caches. Instead, we, we will be able to have a very, very small XDP program doing denial of service protection while we are pushing the frames off that do, do the real work for the, because that's actually, that's the real work you want to do on the machine, right? And I think I have this. There's a lot of tricks to actually getting this fast enough for cross CPU delivery. I'm doing all kinds of uh, uh, funny tricks. Um, <laughs> that's not so interesting. And, and, but the, the, the design is actually, you, it gets a little bit more complicated to, to reason about because you, have, you will now have more queues that you're enqueuing packets into. So you have the, the, the enqueue into the CPU map and the receive nappy, and you have on, you have on pin thread on other CPUs that, that have to dequeue this and you can schedule your user space program on a third CPU. So when you're playing with it, uh, I put a hint up here, is that the kernel has automatically limits you. You should, you can pin this on other CPUs because if you want to run this all on the same CPU, it also happens with a normal network stack, but in this case, you can actually control it. Uh, 
you, you want to avoid scheduling packets through the CPU scheduler. So if you, you're running, competing on the same CPU, trying to, to get the same program, sending packets to the program and then scheduling the user space program, scheduling the K-trace and scheduling the user space program, jumping back and forward. The Unix kernel actually has a, a, like granularity how, how fast the scheduler will allow you to do this stuff. So, so you can actually tune that, but I would recommend against it because you know, like have more than a million context switches. That's not so good. Instead, you can pin it on different CPUs because that's basically a mechanism for, for, for controlling the workload on, on, on your system. Uh, I'd, we did some recent changes to the, to, the, to the receive queue stuff. So we actually provide some information about the ingress queue and the receive queue. That's not so interesting. <clears throat> yeah, I've introduced this thing com, called XCP frame where we are uh, an XTP frame and an XTP buffer. So we start with an XTP buffer, and, but when we're doing redirect, I, we, we generalized that we saw a need for both when we are redirecting into the, the tune tap device, it was using this, these tricks of, inf, uh, of, of storing this information. So the XTP frame is a, is a method of, of queuing stuff. So we need to queue, to queue frames for, for bulking. Um, and we generalize that. So what actually happens is that we're actually using the top part of, of the DMA frame we're getting to, to, put, to put in our metadata. Uh, so we are, this is a new, 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 uh, new metadata for, 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 the, for the packet. It's not replacing the SKB, but we, are, we, we have to store this information somewhere. So to avoid allocating new memory for, for having our data structure, you just put it in, in the top of the frame, and that's actually the same as DPDK does. It, it also has, has the, the information about the frame in, in top of the frame itself. And then we have uh, the introduced the memory return API, which allows for redirecting, these redirect frames to be returned directly. That allows us to implement different zero copy models and and allow more flexibility in the drivers to actually per receive queue change, change the memory, memory model, uh, and then the drivers can go invent uh, different, different zero, uh, AF, XTP, zero copy facilities. That's what we are we're using that for. So, so that's also a, a fairly big change that we allowed the drivers to do this. Um, I think, yeah, that's, and that's the presentation. So thank you.